This is Charles Jordan, and back in the early 1980s, I was the editor of a national collectibles magazine called Collectibles Illustrated. During that time, I appeared on literally hundreds of radio and television programs all across North America, promoting the magazine and talking about collectibles. On May 6, 1982, I appeared on the Roy Leonard Show on WGN in Chicago. Leonard was a very popular broadcast personality in the Windy City, whose midday show on WGN ran for 31 years. Roy Leonard came to WGN from Boston in 1967, and he retired from the station in 1998. Roy Leonard passed away in 2014 at the age of 83. You get a chance to try for Cubs or Sox tickets, and uh, as long as the subject of baseball is at hand, a young man, Charles Jordan, just walked into the studio. Charles is the editor of a new magazine called Collectibles Illustrated. Hey, Charlie, how, how are, are you? doing, Roy? I'm well. Yeah, uh, I wish Debbie's luck were a little bit better. However, if up in the attic somewhere, Debbie's got some old baseball cards. Are We're going to talk about collectibles. Are they still worth something? Uh, yeah, baseball cards are very popular today. Uh, matter of fact, the, the most valuable card, uh, the famous Honus Wagner card uh, went from three thousand dollars to a uh, current price of twenty five thousand <laughs> in the past five years. Wait a minute, twenty five thousand dollars for a Honus Wagner baseball card? Why so much? What made it go up? Well, in in the field of baseball cards, you have a phenomena where you get, uh, as with many collectibles, uh, one item that becomes the ultimate collectible. And Honus Wagner, uh, who was a ball player uh, with Pittsburgh yeah. uh, about uh, early in the century. Uh, was pictured on a tobacco card. Now, Honus Wagner was a non-smoker oh. and uh, was very worried about what this was going to do to his image. Yeah. So he threatened to uh, bring some action against uh, this tobacco company if they didn't pull the cards in. They did, except for a few. Oh, and those boy. few have been going around in circles for the past uh, over half century, and uh, the prices continue to go up. Hmm. Uh, so th this is like the ultimate baseball card. Twenty-five uh, grand. Or a piece of paper. Oh, yeah. boy. Well, before our Billy Buckner baseball card gets that high, friends, it'll be a few years, and Billy better start getting a few more hits. Anyway, <laughs> collectibles uh, are something that kind of seemed to catch the fancy of America in a sudden spurt just a few years ago. I mean, people have always collected things, but wow, all of a sudden, hey, let's start collecting. What, right. what prompted all this, I wonder? Well, uh, for a long time, uh, there was the antique movement in yeah. this country. Uh, really gained some momentum uh, starting at, started in the 20s. Uh, really was going uh, full steam ahead into the 40s, 50s. Then ultimately, the the great finds were all to be found. Are all found. Uh, the time of driving up to a barn sale or an out of the way antique shop and coming up with Chippendale furniture mm. for ten dollars uh, have passed. But uh, the collecting compulsion uh, seems to be part of the American. Uh, scene. So what has happened, uh, Roy, is uh, the collectibles movement has, has uh, filled in the vacuum. And today, the items uh, that are most actively sought are uh, the things we all grew up with. Uh, the Roy Rogers uh, pistol sets, the uh, Little Orphan Annie radio uh, uh, giveaways, uh, Buck Rogers, uh, Gone with the Wind posters, uh, yeah. baseball cards, comic books, Superman comic books. These are the hot items of today. And this is the area we are concentrating on with Collectibles Illustrated. Do you know something? I know the man, or I know, I don't know him personally, but I know who the man is that owns Mr. Spock's ears. Uh, and I wouldn't have known it if I hadn't looked up uh, the volume one, number one of collectibles. See, right. that's, that's the reason Charlie's here. He's the editor of the new magazine, which I just found, I didn't know this. It's put out by some good friends of ours who come down and visit with us every year, the folks who put out, put out Yankee Magazine and the Old Farmer's Almanac. Right, yeah, uh, we're, we're the same, uh, same outfit. This is... Uh uh, a national publication, and uh, the copy you have right there, Roy, is uh, volume one, number one. That will uh, be a collectible uh, someday, probably won't Probably 59 cents or 60 cents in a couple <laughs> of years. Huh? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, we're quite excited by it. Uh, it is uh, national, and uh, surprisingly, there's a lot of tie-ins uh, to the Chicago area. I was uh, just thinking about it. Uh, uh, the ge there's a gentleman here in Chicago that owns uh, the the biggest political button. Uh, he is an attorney in town, and last year purchased uh, a Franklin Roosevelt button for thirty thousand dollars in New York. Uh, as some of your listeners may know, uh, 
Franklin Roosevelt ran unsuccessfully as a vice presidential mm -hmm. candidate in, in 1920 with James Cox uh, prior to uh, the period of polio uh, in his life. Uh, this button pictured Roosevelt much younger than we remember him and, uh, and Cox. Twelve years later, uh, of course, he becomes president of the United States. Who thought in 1920 to save, uh, you know, the losers' yeah. pins? Yeah, but uh, uh, the few that did yeah. got a nice investment. The nice thing we haven't really had a magazine like this, which talks about everyday collectibles. Now we're not talking about antiques. We're talking about, yeah. for instance, uh, you know, you, there's a story in this uh, current ed edition about uh, Phyllis Diller, who I've interviewed many, many times, but I never talked to her about her cork yeah. collection. <laughs> she collects the corks, you know, the out of wine bottles and things, which yeah. I never even know. I wouldn't consider them collectibles. But look, we've got a lot to talk about. Maybe you want to share in the conversation. And we got to take a break for some commercials, then we'll come right back, all right? Charles Jordan is our guest. The magazine is called Collectibles. And this Thursday, May the 6th, on WGN in Chicago, will continue after a few words. All the Walgreens stores are open Sunday, Mother's Day, for your convenience. Of course, don't wait till then. I mean, if you're going to shop for your Mother's Day gift, get to Walgreens now. Go into the beauty center, the appliance center, the candy center, and get a live plant, maybe. They have gorgeous mum plants for only $3.99, or a lush green foliage plant in a 10-inch pot at the low sale price of $9.99. But shop early for the best selection. and Pick up your Mother's Day cards at Walgreens to go along with your present, but do it today. Life seems tougher than ever today today. Sometimes the pressures can give you a rotten headache, but fortunately there's extra strength Excedrin to fight the pain with the two strongest pain relievers you can buy, plus a third ingredient for unsurpassed relief. Nothing you can buy works harder on your headache. Life got tougher, and Excedrin got stronger. Extra strength Excedrin capsules and tablets. Excedrin in the 100 tablet bottle is on sale at Walgreens through Sunday. Save at Walgreens, the shopper's center. At Steve Foley Cadillac in Northbrook, you might be closer to owning a Cadillac than you think, especially if you're expecting to spend more than $10,000 on a new car. And if you act right now, you can get a preferred low finance rate of just 12.8%. Now, the special low finance rate is offered only for a limited time, so you got to act now. Today is the day to head for Steve Foley Cadillac in Northbrook. Test drive the world-class Cimarron, the one that sells for only slightly more than $11,000. Or the Coupe de Ville, the Sedan de Ville, the Eldorado, the Fleetwood or Seville. Chances are, with Foley's big discounts, generous trading allowances, and low finance rate, you can drive away in a luxurious new 1982 Cadillac today. But don't delay. Head over to Steve Foley Cadillac in Northbrook, Eden's Expressway, at Lake Cook Road. By popular demand, Gretchen Cryer returns to Chicago. For six weeks only, Travelite Productions presents I'm Getting My Act Together and Taking It on the Road at the World Playhouse downtown. The musical of the 80s, hailed by the critics as joyous and appealing, is back. I'm Getting My Act Together and Taking It on the Road, starring Gretchen Cryer at the World Playhouse. For tickets, call 922 51 101. Preview start today. The number again for tickets, 922-5101. Up, down, up, down, lift them high. Every day, and each of us faces our two, private four, battle five, with a scale. Seven, eight, we try eight, exercise, we try dieting, shoulder, but sometimes seven, these don't work. Believe it or not, it's what's in your head, not your fridge, that can make the difference between success and failure. Today at 4.30, Dr. Joyce Brothers shows how to win your battle against the scale using willpower as your weapon. So watch Channel 7's 430 Eyewitness News and start thinking thin. Some of your neighbors are preparing for the worst. Camelot has disappeared in the sunset and uh, people are starting to realize that uh, they're their own best providers. They're stockpiling food and water. They're learning to use weapons. A passive survivalist is a dead survivalist. They're watching out for themselves. But who's watching out for you? The Survivalists, a special report by Joel Daly tonight at 10 on Channel 7's Eyewitness News. It's 20 minutes after 1 o'clock. This is WGN in Chicago. Hi, Minnie. I just wanted to remark, uh, I saw Heart, uh, the program Heart to Heart on Tuesday night, and the whole program was related to baseball cards. So oh, I missed that one. Oh, yes, it was very interesting. Now now you have this guest on over yeah. here today. It, to me, it, it just coincided together, you know, like that, and I thought it was very, very good because they were say, also saying about how expensive each card was and how they sold it, like $250 million for the whole set, and he had, oh, thousands of cards in this one set. 
suitcase, and his father had uh, saved him, you know, mm -hmm. for a time. And I thought it was very interesting, the whole program like well, that. Well, if you find some in the attic, be careful. Right. Okay, Minnie, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Hello. You're on the air with us. Yes, I have a group of movie posters. They're not typical posters. Oh. They're from, they were hung in the box office. And they're sort of character cures, and they're from the, the 40s with Catherine Hepburn, Spencer Tracy, advertising certain movies of theirs. I have about 32 of them. I knew hmm. someone that owned the movie house, and she used to give these to me. Oh, yeah. Where would I go to find out if they're worth anything? Um, I'm very attached to them, but times being as they are, I thought maybe some of them would be valuable. I think uh, you have uh, something that is uh, quite valuable right now with Katherine Hepburn. Uh, Especially, yeah. Yeah, uh, some, uh, something that is uh, typical of the collecting field is once uh, a, a star is reborn again, uh, Katherine Hepburn obviously has never gone out of style, but... Uh, but more than ever, but, yeah, you know. Yeah. She is very, very hot today, uh, and I would say that... Uh, the item is as popular as it probably will get uh, right now. Uh, well, I have. They're not just a Catherine Hepburn. But yeah. Lana Turner, Clark Gable. Gable. Uh, certain certain names. It's interesting. Uh, as time goes on, certain uh, Hollywood stars just seem to shine brighter and brighter. It's incredible mm -hmm. how popular uh, Bogart is today. Uh, when Laurel and Hardy were out, really, who thought that they would become the culture figures that they are today? Uh, there is a society uh, which. I could refer you to. Uh, they're called the Society of Cinephiles. Uh, they, uh, I don't have offhand with me the address, but uh, there is also an, uh, a publication called Encyclopedia of Associations which lists them. They are a group of very serious film buffs that gather, uh, as I recall, every Labor Day in a different part of the country and just sell and swap and buy items of the kind of Strictly of the movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, movies are definitely uh, what they do. They, uh, it's interesting because I went to uh, a show, a similar show, uh, uh, and you will find these people watching Laurel and Hardy and Charlie Chaplin at 3 o'clock in the morning. I mean, they just go around the clock. Well, I guess, Nancy, you got to find the Association of Cinephiles, uh, perhaps. Yeah, that is one. And also, too, there are a great many dealers of uh, motion picture items in e all of the cities. A uh, uh, check of uh, the phone book would probably bring some names forward. The best thing uh, anyone can really do is, uh, if they have the time and if they have the interest, uh, to find a collector. Because... Uh, uh, what uh, dealers also are very helpful, and they will give you the opportunity of doing the legwork for you. But if you're looking for the ultimate uh, price, uh, collectors That's usually are the people who are going to pay these. I wondered where you would find those. Well, one one thing we offer with our publication is just such a, a thing. We we feature collectors constantly, and we have a section in the beginning of our publication called Display Case. And here we uh, tell people about new clubs, uh, activities of some of the various uh, collecting groups around the country. Uh, in, in our first issue, uh, we have something about a new uh, collecting association for people who are fanciers of the old reed organs. Uh, a lot of uh, people still have some of these in their attics, in their cellars, everywhere. Uh, we will let uh, people know whenever we hear what's going on out there. All right. Good. Nancy, I'm glad you called. Okay, thank you. I noticed, Charlie, you have, too, uh, a classified section. In fact, when Nancy's call came in, I opened... Uh, by the way, this is the first issue. It's just out, is, and it's on the newsstands everywhere? Yeah, around Chicago. Mm -hmm. All right, it's called Collectibles Illustrated. You know, it sells for a buck ninety-five, but it's just out, put out by Yankee Publishers. But I notice in the classifieds now under movies, uh, movie posters, wanted by collector, highest prices paid, and they give mm -hmm. you a box number somewhere. And uh, here's somebody who's looking for a specific issue of something. Right. And, uh, you know, you'll if you happen to have the October 90, 1944 issue of Modern Screen... Um, Is that with Ronald Reagan? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's willing to pay 150 bucks for it. Yeah. And yeah. they've advertised. So. Well, you know what's funny? Uh, our classifieds are a great resource for us, so this is kind of a behind-the-scenes thing, but people can place a classified asking any price they want uh, if they sell. That's that's interesting. We're watching one classified uh, in, in this first issue of a gentleman trying to sell 
sell a Woodstock ticket uh, from the uh, oh, and yeah. he's got a he's got a, a pre-sale estimate of six thousand dollars. What? We're gonna see. Uh, yeah. He thinks he's gonna if, get six. If he can 000? sell it, it becomes uh, a story. For this us. is the uh, the ticket to the great uh, rock festival yeah. mm -hmm. in Woodstock. Mm -hmm. He's got the ticket. Yeah. yeah. You know it's interesting. I, I, my sons, uh, well, one we have six sons, but one one of my sons' walls, he has kept every ticket I think to every rock concert he's ever been to. I mean, you know, he's got the Grateful Dead, Paul McCartney, and Wings. Mm -hmm. You know, Bob Dylan. I see them all there. He's just kept the ticket stubs, it's, and I want. He's quite uh, wise to do so. Really? Uh, right now, I I have seen people selling facsimiles of Beatles tickets uh, just to have a facsimile. Oh. Again, I've heard uh, hundreds of dollars offered uh, for early Beatles uh, tickets. Ticket stubs. Uh, last year, one of the hot tickets to had uh, to have had was a Rolling Stones ticket. Oh yeah, of course. Of course, before the concert, but also <laughs> after the concert, uh, because uh, very few people kept them as a souvenir. Uh, went all through right. enough to get it. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a gentleman in Hartford, Connecticut uh, that uh, kept it under glass and didn't go to the concert because he felt it was worth more that way. So <laughs> did he's, he's didn't waiting. even use yeah. the ticket. Yeah. That's great. All right, listen, we got to take a break here. Charles Jordan is our guest, and we're, we're talking about Collectibles Illustrated. It's a new publication. We have to take a break for these commercials, and then we'll come right back. There's a place where seafood is celebrated. Celebrate the Boston Sea Party. Boston Sea Party. Ours is a feast warm by white linen and candlelight. A celebration of seafood that begins at buffet piers piled high with the ocean's bounty. Mounds of shrimp, caviar, seafood Newburgh, Alaskan crab legs. All you can eat for one price, including a main course of fresh Maine lobster, New York strip steak, or juicy prime rib of beef. There's a dessert pier, too, decked with fresh fruits, pastries, and wheels of cheese. Boston Sea Party. Make reservations and join the celebration. You'll be happy as a clam. Celebrate a star-spangled party, a catch-fresh and hearty, the Boston Sea Party. A celebration of seafood, served nightly from 5 p.m. If you don't think WGN Sports Central is the best you've ever heard, well, you just haven't heard it. Jack Brickhouse and Chuck Swirsky, weeknight, 615 to 7. You can't afford to miss it here on WGN Radio. Well, spring has finally arrived with a touch of summer and, and heat and humidity and even scattered thunderstorms. Well, if you're going to put in some trees and shrubs, you want to buy the hardiest, and you ought to buy from people who know what, where, and how to plant them. So that's why you ought to start this year with a trip to the Sinistvit Garden and Gift Center. Because in addition to a great selection of woody plants, Sinistvit have beautiful potted wildflowers, they have perennials, they have California number one roses and rhododendrons to delight the gardener. You can even tour through Sinistvit's mini arboretum out in Glenview and see how your plants are going to look in the ground. Another plus, Sinistvit grows most of their trees and shrubs and evergreens right in their own 300-acre burr oak nursery. Now, that means the plants are not only competitively priced, but fully acclimated to Chicago's harsh weather. So for that old-fashioned friendliness and service, you visit Sinistvit in Glenview, on Glenview Road west to Greenwood, or Sinistvit in Round Lake at Route 120 and Fairfield Road. Sinistvit. It might be a little hard to pronounce, but their products and services are even harder to beat. Jewels, a cake for your daughter's birthday, your favorite late-night snack. Jewels, your Sunday roast beef dinner, school lunches that you pack. We've been a friend of the family for 50 years. Your friend of the family, Jewels. Come and get them at Jewels. Family values like Mountain Dew, Diet Pepsi, and Pepsi. Through Wednesday, eight 16-ounce bottles are just $1.49 plus deposit at Jewel. And here's a sweet new treat from Jewel. Vanilla-flavored generic ice milk. 99 cents buys a half gallon through Wednesday. Choose your anniversary dinner. Choose your backyard barbecue. The fixings that you pack up for those picnics at the got it. And now you can have Reno for only $359, including round-trip airfare and deluxe accommodations. See this Sunday Chicago Times travel section. 
There's a new publication out that you'll see in the newsstands. Uh, hey, it's fascinating. Pick it up. It's called Collectibles Illustrated. Even if you're not into collectibles, there's a marvelous story here about a fellow who actually owns Mr. Spock's ears. How do, now, how do you track down somebody like this? Well, we uh, we are fortunate to already to be sort of a, a magnet for for people uh, that are telling us about their relatives and uh, cousins and brothers. Uh, this particular gentleman uh, was not all that difficult to track down because he is the foremost collector of science fiction items in the country, oh. and his name is Forrest Ackerman, and he was instrumental in uh, forming a publication called Famous Monsters of Filmland. So he's had some pretty impressive uh, friends through the years, and they have given him. Uh, some very interesting items, including Leonard Nimoy, who presented him with uh, his ears after the yeah. program went off the air. You know, it would really be good. They, they have just... One of my favorite all-time science fiction movies is a movie called The Thing. I mean, I loved it, the old black and white and all. But they're coming out, you know, with a new version of The Thing this summer. And I don't think Jim Arness is going to... No. <laughs> Which, by the way, that is one of the great trivia questions of all time, you know, what famous actor appeared in The Thing. But uh, evidently, uh, this fellow that we're talking about, he has got the claw mm -hmm. that Arnes wore in the original The Thing. Yeah, he has uh, also, he has uh, <clears throat> the uh, original King Kong that was used, it was a scale model of yeah. King Kong, used to climb the Empire State Building in the 1931 classic. And uh, he's a very interesting fellow. He's, uh, hmm. he's hobnobbed with uh, Bela Lugosi and uh, Boris Karloff on a regular basis uh, in the past. Anyway, so this uh, magazine we're talking about, Collectibles Illustrated, not only has uh, classified ads and new information, but, you know, interesting stories about interesting collectors. What do you collect, Joe? Well, I tried to collect some fish. Just got back from fishing. It didn't do no good. But I have some old comic books. I was wondering if they're worth anything. Mm, I guess so. From uh, Lulu and uh, Archie and Nancy, early, late yeah. 50s, early 60s. Uh, the Archie comics that are really the, the most uh, valuable and hard to find are from the uh, early 50s, mid-50s. There is a, a large uh, following of Archie comic uh, comics through the years. Uh, Bob Montana, who's from the same state I am uh, from, New Hampshire, passed on now, but he uh, has quite an incredible following. What many people don't realize today is that uh, Archie uh, Andrews uh, first got his big boost into the media via radio. Yeah, there was a program oh. uh, on in the 40s uh, yeah. based on the comic books and the uh, comic strip. Archie comics have been really interesting so that they have sustained uh, you know, a continual following. They're as popular today as, as they were in the past. Uh, there were certain spin-offs. Uh, one one was, a, I, I don't know if you recall, the Katie Keene comic books. These Katie Keene was put out by the same outfit that printed Archie comics. And Katie was very popular in the late 50s and was always uh, shown uh, wearing the latest outrageous costumes, the sack dresses oh, yeah. and whatever. And readers would send in uh, suggestions for costumes for Katie. These are very, very popular today. Archie and, and uh, Little Lulu, I would say that they are, there is, is collected as they will get if there is a revival of Archie at some stage in the future, as there was in the 60s. So, so you, what do you, you go to a show or you take an ad? Yeah, comic books, uh, again, are a big feel. Uh, there are several comic conventions being held. Uh, there was oh, yeah, Comic Con, we mentioned quite frequently. Uh, if you have, tell you what, Joe, keep the radio on because the people who run the Comic Con conventions always let me know ahead, and they're in town every three or four months, and then they have one big show every year. And I guess what, you'd bundle all your old Archie comic books books under your arm and go down and see if anybody wants to buy it. Right. That's Great. it. Thank you. Okay, Joe. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, Margie. Hi. I have an autographed photo of Ronald Reagan dates back to 64 before he was even governor of California. And I also have an autograph of Richard Nixon, at that time private citizen. How do I find out how much these are worth? Furthermore, how do I go about selling them? Okay, uh, you have two uh, signatures that have uh, potential of being quite valuable. Was there in person when Nixon, Nixon yeah. signed it, so I know it's authentic. That, that is uh, a big plus because uh, one of the, the big problems with the uh, autograph field uh, in regards to presidents, so since uh, John Kennedy, a matter of fact, has been the auto pen. Uh, oh, a wow. lot of uh, documents uh, that were signed were signed by a mechanical device uh, monitored by a secretary. <clears throat> uh, Ronald Reagan 
signature, uh, especially on something that gives some kind of reference to his uh, motion picture days or his, his pre-motion picture days. He was in radio uh, as well. Uh, these are the kind of items that are going to be of the greatest value and are at this point. Richard Nixon, I am uh, guessing, is about ready to uh, go into a very popular stage with collectors because of the fact that uh, next month, uh, believe it or not, is the uh, 10th anniversary of the Watergate break-in, and uh, the media is certainly going to be picking up on that. It was in June 72, That's and right, uh, June yeah. 82 is uh, the 10th anniversary. Uh, I can give you a very quick story about the most popular uh, Richard Nixon autograph. Yeah, tell us. Okay. Uh, a few months ago, uh, surfaced at Hamilton Galleries in New York uh, a facsimile letter of the Nixon resignation uh, document. The actual, of course, is uh, under lock and key in the National Archives and will never go on the collecting market. But uh, this did not stop a collector uh, who at some point had stopped him, the former president and asked him to sign a blank piece of paper. He said, uh, oh, really? yeah, could you assign this, uh, Mr. Nixon? Nixon did not ask why, uh, signed it. The gentleman went home, typed above it, uh, exact word-for-word -word, uh, resignation statement, which was addressed to the Secretary of State, uh, Henry Kissinger, said, I hereby resign, whatever. Yeah. Uh, went to uh, Hamilton, which is one of the biggest autograph galleries in the world, said, this is a this is a facsimile, it's a novelty item. Uh, they authenticated the signature, put it up for sale, and sold it for $6,000. Oh, my God. The, ne the next day, the collector who purchased it sold it to another collector in Europe for $10,000. Holy And uh, that is uh, just an idea of what uh, Richard Nixon's Gee. autograph may uh, be uh, when put to the full extent. Now, Margie, do you happen to have Ronald Reagan's <clears throat> autograph on a plain piece of white typing paper? <laughs> no, Over it happens or, to be on an uh, by 10 glossy photo. <laughs> yeah, see, I was thinking you could write all sorts of crazy things over it and under it. <laughs> yeah, right. I could pay off my mortgage. <laughs> but isn't that something, huh? Yeah, Ronald Reagan, right now, uh, there's a sale that's going on, and I think this week in New York, uh, where they're selling some of Ronald Reagan's school books uh, that were autographed by him. And uh, again, we're not talking uh, nickels and dimes. These are pretty hot items. I would have, I would check with a legitimate autograph collector to get the item appraised. Uh, where if, do I go about finding a legitimate? Uh, there, I would. Uh, my suggestion would be to contact the, the Charles Hamilton Gallery in New York and ask them for for some suggestions as far as someone in this area. Okay. What if is it their, is, do you have their address? I don't offhand, but uh, you could probably get that through the directory. Uh, they are in in Manhattan. Charles Hamilton Gallery. Galleries. And okay. if it is a, a very hot item, a one of a kind item, uh, again, I I don't know. Reagan probably may have signed hundreds and hundreds of autograph photographs, but anyone who has an item that they think is valuable uh, should have it appraised, should, uh, and if, if it is a, a popular item, consider having it brought up to auction. Okay, now how about, I also have an 8x10 photo of Barry Goldwater. Okay. <laughs> My parents were very... Okay. Very country Republican, yeah. so I have all these things. I sort of guessed that, Margie. <laughs> Everything was from '64. I was 12 years old, and I wrote letters like crazy and got autographed. Yeah, Barry right. Goldwater is. I don't think all that popular with collectors. Uh, although surprisingly, Barry Goldwater is probably one of the biggest collectors himself. Is uh, he? He collects Western art and Western uh, all sorts of Western items. He and mm -hmm. Reagan both are collectors of uh, old spurs and saddlebags, and uh, oh. uh, so. I don't know. I really couldn't advise you too much on, on Goldwater, but uh, uh, losers uh, often are winners with collectors. Uh, right. so, again, I will try writing Charles Hamilton galleries. Yeah. All right, Margie. Thanks a lot. Thanks for calling. Bye now. If you just happen to turn the radio on, uh, our guest, Charles Jordan, is the editor of a new magazine called Collectibles Illustrated. One of the feature articles, by the way, in the first edition is What to Save from the 80s. And instead of throwing out all of that stuff, well, let's take a break for these commercials, and then Charlie can give us an idea of, uh, you know, if you got a trunk somewhere, the stuff that you might put in, and who knows, 10, 15, 20, 50 years from now, you could make your heirs very wealthy. Hans Kessler, brewmaster for Augsburger Beer. Most beer drinkers who sample our Augsburger beer have trouble believing it's brewed in America. Perhaps that's why Augsburger asked me, a good old boy from Monroe, Wisconsin, to assure you Augsburger is as American as the 4th of July. It's ranked number one in the great American beer book. 
How do you like them apples, kiddo? Thank you, Hans. You have brightened the afternoon now. 19 and a half before 2, you know that we're going to get some scattered uh, showers. Uh, we might, those uh, uh, showers early this afternoon will be really scattered, but later tonight, we might get some heavy stuff, and they'll increase tonight, and tomorrow we'll have a few more periods of rain and thunderstorms, but the outlook for the weekend, for Mother's Day weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, is now sunny and very pleasant. Magic from Monarch, it's magic for you. Monarch's cleaning magic means a new lease on life for your carpet. Magic from Monarch, it's magic for you. Why do you need Monarch's cleaning magic for your carpet? Because even though you can't see it, carpeting can get just as dirty as hardwood, tile, and linoleum floors. The same tract in dirt, the same spots and spills that you keep scrubbing off your shiny floors hide deep down in the fibers of carpet. And that's where Monarch Cleaning Magic comes in. Now, there's no substitute for a real professional carpet cleaning job. Now, even the toughest dirt can't hide from a Monarch Cleaning. The exclusive superpower cleaning equipment comes right to your home to give your carpet that fresh, light, new look. And the results, of course, is a magical difference in your home. Call for a free estimate. Monarch. You'll find them in your phone book. Temperature now is 82 at O'Hare, 81 at the uh, uh, Midway Airport uh, temperature station, and 82 at the lakefront. You're about to make your kids' favorite sandwich. American cheese and bologna, mayonnaise, and plenty of grape jelly. Then, to make it even better for him, you put it all on whole grain bread. New Brunola from Brownberry. Mom, what's this funny new bread? You know whole grain bread is good for kids, but kids don't like things that are good for them. Is this supposed to be good? good for me. Fortunately, new Brunola from Brownberry tastes great, even to the most finicky kid. I don't know. Looks kind of wholesome. Brunola's made with good wholesome things like four cereal grains and Miller's brand for natural food fiber. Very suspicious. And good tasting things like honey and raisin syrup with a softer texture that kids like. I'll just try one bite. Brunola lets you give a kid something good for him without ruining his favorite sandwich. Mmm, tastes great, Mom. Just needs a little ketchup. New Brunola, honest bread from Brownberry, in three varieties. Original, country oat, and hearty wheat. Because whole grain isn't wholesome unless your family eats it. It's about 17 minutes before the hour of two now on WGN in Chicago. We're talking about collecting things and uh, introducing a new magazine. Our friends at uh, Yankee, who bring you Yankee Magazine, as well as the old Farmer's Almanac, are now putting out Collectibles Illustrated. And Charles Jordan, the editor, is with us today. Hi, Grace. Hi, Roy. What you got? Well, I'll tell you. I'm just another person calling to find out if I have something valuable. What is it? It's a Texaco Fire Chief hat. Hmm. And I would assume it's probably about 20 or 25 years old. I actually got it from my sister when her kids were <clears throat> real little. Was that a pre... Did they give away a premium, I wonder? That was the old... Yeah, uh, I uh, haven't uh, What's seen his it. name? That used well, to do the commercial. Was he the one who had the Texaco Yeah. Power? Ed Wynn yeah, used Ed to do Wynn the commercials. Yeah, on radio, and then, uh, uh, what was what's it? What's his name there? Milton Burrow? Yeah, Milton yeah Milton that's yeah, right. Milton that was Milty, Uncle Milty sponsor. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen uh, too many Tesco fire hats uh, in the past uh, few years. I would think that they're, they're, uh, a lot of them were tossed away, and consequently there would be some interest in this. Uh, you have an interesting item there, because uh, something of this kind, uh, is, again, it's typical of the collecting field. You would want to find who would have the greatest desire to own a, a piece like this. Now, there could be somebody who collects Texaco items, there could be oh. someone who collects Fire Chief items, or there could be somebody who collects Ed Wynn or Milton Burl items. Oh, yeah. So what you want to do is look uh, right across the board and uh, before parting with an item. If this were something, of course, associated with the uh, the show of the 30s, the Ed Wynn show, I, I would say I, I would say that it is a very a potentially hot item, uh, radio premium radio giveaway things are popular uh, you would want to find out exactly when that was produced uh, with someone uh, and I would perhaps start by checking with a radio collector a uh, radio premium yeah. collector I see I can find that in your book yeah yeah we we will be covering items like this uh, right or every issue uh, different uh, advertising giveaway items are very popular with collectors uh, say for example you have uh, uh, old uh, gauge the check uh, the air of your tire uh, and uh, the thing says does not have any anything printed on it that may be worth a couple of dollars uh, if it, even if it is 50 years old you put the word Ford or Hudson uh, or uh, you know any any of the old cars uh, on it suddenly it has an identification and oh. becomes valuable so if you had a fire chief hat 
didn't say Texaco, it probably would not be worth a great deal at all. You put Texaco on it, it identifies it immediately and it makes your work a little easier. Of course, one thing too, Grace, I might mention another feature of the map. What does this come out, by the way? Once a month or two? Bi-monthly, right now. Yeah. All right, so that's every other month. Yeah. Right. The that's magazine nice. comes out every other month, but one thing I noticed too is that they do give a list of where a lot of the shows are. Yeah, this is, uh, the, sh the show uh, world is a very big part of the collecting field today. There were a number of big uh, promoters around the country. Shows are happening all the time. There was a big toy show here in Chicago very, very recently. Uh, last year, I believe, uh, beer can collectors helped yep. uh, a very big thing here. Right. Where they crushed the Billy beer can. Yeah. <laughs> and right. uh, the uh, shows are, are a fun uh, thing to go to, and it might be a worthwhile showing up at one with your hat. Yeah, you have to look into it. Okay, right? Grace. You've got a loudspeaker on it and everything. <laughs> All right, good luck. Good. Thank you. Good. Bye-bye. Uh, our newspaper headlines, I, I noticed that one of the articles in the first issue of Collectibles Illustrated is about uh, the 10th anniversary of Watergate, and mm -hmm. I noticed that some of the, the, the headline uh, stories right. of Watergate are uh, popular. Are our headlines and, and they are uh, they are very popular. Uh, one thing about the Watergate uh, headline that, that's interesting is everyone would think uh, automatically, well, okay, one of the Chicago or New York papers uh, would be the ultimate uh, paper to have that says Nixon resigned. So the the New York Times edition is now selling for about thirty dollars. <laughs> but the best paper to have is uh, Nixon's hometown in Yorba Linda, uh, Whittier. Uh, they had their own news papers and here was the uh, the end of a career for the hometown boy and that is uh, twice the value of any other paper. Yeah. Uh, is the headline any different? I mean did they treat it any different? Uh, they they played up more so that uh, the Watergate nightmares are over and not oh. so much it was the end of the uh, the Nixon era but as much as the beginning of the Ford era. How about that famous uh, Chicago Tribune uh, headline you know with uh, Truman holding up the newspaper that says Dewey wins. Yeah. Is that, that still worth though? That paper uh, is the biggest uh, design paper of the 20th century, believe it or not. It's selling for $750 right now. All right. Uh, it tops all of them. Bonnie, you got a headline? Yes. Uh, in the, uh, July 17, 1980, sometimes, yeah. it read Reagan and Ford. <laughs> You've got it. Is okay. that worth anything? $50. <laughs> what? $50 is, is what really? they're selling for. Yeah, uh, that paper and the Call Chronicle in Allenstown, Pennsylvania, were the two that uh, attempted to scoop the world and tell uh, everyone about it. And uh, again, error headlines are, are very popular items. That uh, has the potential of increasing in value just as a Dewey Truman uh, All right, so. I would, If I were you, I would hold on to that and not sell it right now. Okay, okay Bonnie. Thank you so much. You betcha. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is your Aunt Nellie. I want to tell you about all my Joes. Uh, Aunt Nellie, please. We're on the radio. First, there's Sloppy Joe. Oh, made with Aunt Nellie's Sloppy Joe sandwich sauce, right? Right. And then there's Chicken Joe. I don't know that one. And Chili Joe. Mm. Burger Joe. Sounds good. They're all good. I make them all with my Aunt Nellie's Sloppy Joe sandwich sauce. It's the cooking sauce for Sloppy Joes you can use all kinds of ways. You sure have a lot of Joes, Aunt Nellie. Yes, I know. And everyone has excellent taste. Time is 11 minutes before 2 in Chicago. You can enjoy Jay's Okie Doke Cheese Popcorn. It's terrific. The first time you came to dinner I fell for your sweet fruit pies You won my heart with domino You said it was just my eyes I married you anyway, didn't I? Mm-hmm. And you haven't been late for dinner in 20 years. Of course, Domino's been making good cooks out of my family for over 80 years. And it's still made from only the finest pure cane sugar. They make more kinds than anyone, too. I think you married me for my Domino. Nope. It really was your eyes. Oh, Domino's been family for such a long, long time. Making life a little sweeter as it's passed on down the line. Now you're still using Domino, America's number one brand of sugar for over 80 years. Wow.
Wow, gee whiz, hot dog. Don't tell me. You're tickled pink that the baseball season has opened. No. Well, yes. But I just found out about the suit sale at William A. Lewis. Must be some sale. Well, listen. Spring and summer skirt suits are just $28. Can you believe it? There are solids and two color combinations in Missy and Petite sizes. And they're all 100% polyester, so they always look fresh and crisp. Sounds delicious. There's this classic knobby red jacket with white piping. Comes with a nice pleated white skirt. Sounds fabulous. And then there's a short sleeve solid beige with a shawl collar and slim skirt. Well, which will it be? I don't have to choose. I can get both and take 12 months to pay with my William A. Lewis charge account where there's never a finance charge. That's right. Come to William A. Lewis and choose from a variety of wonderful new skirt suits. Regularly $45 to $50, now on sale for only $28 and only at William A. Lewis. That sale ends on May the 30th. We will try to take a couple of more telephone calls, but as long as we have Charles Jordan here, the editor of Collectibles Illustrated, one of the feature stories in the first uh, issue of the magazine, which is just out, is about what to save now. Uh, and after listening to all of the money that can be made from saving things, I may start saving things. But <laughs> what should I save, Charlie? Well, the first first thing I do, Roy, is to look around and see what is happening today. What is happening right at this moment? People who are in the midst of uh, uh, the Lindbergh flight uh, should have saved everything they could have. I'll tell you what the most valuable item is right now. Not the valuable, but the hottest item yeah. are, are stamps from the Falkland Islands. Uh, everybody. I never would have thought of yeah, that, but uh, sure. Two right. months ago, uh, stamp collectors were the only people I really knew where the Falkland Islands were. Yeah. Today, uh, their post office is shut down, at least temporarily, and... Uh, there's a rush on the market. The, whether or not they're valuable yeah. is irregardless. What it is is there sh there's a shortage now because mm -hmm. everyone's going in and buying them. Mm -hmm. So uh, the items, uh, what we try to say is that uh, collectibles do not have to be 20, 30 years old. They could be hours old. They could be... Uh, uh, something like uh, all the many different things associated with a baseball strike last summer. Uh, oh, canceled yeah. tickets, canceled programs. Uh, I survived the 49-day baseball strike, T-shirts <laughs> and things like that. Uh, these are the things that are around today, and uh, the wise collector should be stockpiling uh, some representations of these. So in other words, pay attention to what's going on if you want to become a Read collector. Read the front page right. yeah, of uh, newspapers and find out. All right. Hi, Yolanda. What do you got? Yes, I have a Lipton teapot. That's about 40, about 40 years old. It has the Lipton name embossed on it. Yeah. Would that be worth anything? Okay, again, is it with the case with the uh, the fire chief hat there, because of the fact it has Lipton on it, uh, has a potential value. I remember uh, uh, within the past 10 years uh, when they were marking the anniversary of Pepsi-Cola, uh, and it is incredible how few Pepsi-Cola things were saved. Oh. They were buying their own items uh, to form a, uh, an archive. Lipton may or may not uh, uh, be the place to go, but that would be the first place I'd go. You know, we got at home, it's interesting you bring up Lipton, Yolanda. We've got at home a little miniature a wagon with a, with a horse tied to it that evidently went around once and sold Lipton tea. Uh -huh. And I just kept it because I figured maybe someday it will be valuable, but it looks to me like it's something that came out in the 30s maybe or something. Uh -huh. And uh, so we just kind of kept it and uh, put it on a shelf and... You know, so keep your Lipton teapot, and if times get hard, uh, go to a collector, okay? Okay, thank you very you, much. You thank betcha. you. What do you got, Dan? Stan, uh, Roy, I have an old uh, a 1953 Marilyn Monroe calendar. Is it that famous picture? It's that, that famous, famous picture. Okay, it's that's worth something. Yeah. yeah, it's worth something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that uh, Marilyn Monroe, uh, there was a series put out uh, with that picture on it. For some reason, gas stations seem to turn on a lot, but yep. I've seen uh, everything from funeral homes to uh, <laughs> dentists uh, with that particular yeah. thing you know they, they would send out the just the, the calendar and then uh, they would put their own little promotion thing as an overlay on it yeah. it is hard to say it would depend upon what uh, what if it's associated with a specific place if you had a Marilyn Monroe calendar uh, promoting a happy acres funeral home or so Might be uh, worse that, that would increase it in value uh, Marilyn Monroe again goes through waves of popularity uh, when Norman Mailer's book came out I would have checked the market then. Uh, she'll be back, I'm sure, uh, with another popular one. And actually, too, the funny part about uh, this picture that Dan probably has, the one we're all thinking of, by today's standards, it's a tame picture. Very tame, you know. yeah. But it, uh, <laughs> it was an earth shaker back then. Yeah. I, I, I found this in 
the bottom of a drawer of a dresser that I purchased at an auction sale. Oh, of course. It's covered covered over with <laughs> an old newspaper. Oh boy, some some somebody hid it there, hoping Mom wouldn't see it and <laughs> forgot all about it. Okay, Dan. Thank you. We got to take a break here at five minutes before two, and then we'll be right back. Every day is savings day. Today we're seeing a little more sunshine. Summer's on the way. And that Geneva Lakes area is gearing up. And that second annual Old Style Geneva Lake Area Balloon Rally is coming up. Did you put those dates down? May 22nd and 23rd. That's when uh, all the balloonists ascend on the Geneva Lake area, decorate the skies with all that color. The Saturday morning fun thing is when they all try their luck at grabbing that key that is on a mast of a 35-foot boat anchored right on Geneva Lake. And then at noon on Saturday, everybody goes over to the Abbey grounds, and the balloonists and observers are there. And, and Saturday evening, they have that spectacular, breathtaking mass ascension. And then on Sunday morning, the Fontana Lakefront has its third annual and final lift of the rally. Now, the Abbey will be the headquarters of the balloon rally, the old-style Geneva Lake area balloon rally, to kick off a whole summer season up in the Geneva Lakes area. The opening festivities, May 22nd, the Geneva Lakes area, the lake and so much more. Here's a number to call for information. You dial area code 414, then 248-1000. Hi, this is Red Skelton. I'm going to be in Niles, Illinois on May the 8th, and I'd like to invite you down to the uh, Isles 5 Editions Limited. That's located at 8215 Golf Road in Niles, Illinois. I'll be there in person. It'll be nice to meet you, and thank you for our years of friendship. And I would like for you to see my exhibit of clown oil paintings. Now that's going to be on May the 8th, aisle 5, Editions Limited, located at 8215 Golf Road in Niles, Illinois. Uh, this is Red Skelton saying goodbye for now, and I hope to see you. That's Red Skelton, who will personally sign those clown canvases and figurines and plates that are purchased at aisle 5, Editions Limited on May 8th. And here's a number for information, 966-0974. All right, Barbara, real quick. All right, now, I have some Jackie Gleason fast food bags. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Gleason fast food bags? Yes, they're, they're paper-lined foil bags with his face on it, the name okay. Jackie do you know, Gleason. Do you know about this, uh, yeah, What I would, would do with Jackie Gleason is I, uh, they're going to be re-releasing, -re not re-releasing, but doing Sting 2 or something. Yeah, like right. That, which he's going to play uh, a part in. Uh, that's a week to place a classified advertising that uh, yeah, Gleason's pre-sting days or whatever. Or yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing maybe save for a little while. Yeah, those are those are very difficult to find uh, as time goes on because it's a throwaway item. It's an ephemeral piece and uh, few people would think of saving those, but mm. uh, it's like Star Wars. Uh, yeah. uh, Dixie cups <laughs> picturing Star Wars are going to be harder to find 50 years from now than uh, a toy. That so save them. Okay, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. Charlie, it's a good idea. Uh, there really isn't been anything quite like collectibles illustrated. Uh, I hope it serves some good purpose, uh, other than to make money for Yankee publications. <laughs> but I would imagine for collectors, for people interested, it would be a good thing to have. Well, thank you. And it's on the newsstands. And listen, say hi to uh, all our friends back uh, in Yankee land. Sure and will. Uh, you're up in that area where they made on Golden Pond, aren't oh, yeah, you? New up Hampshire. Oh, like yeah. right up to New Hampshire. Ah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming by. Uncle Bobby comes along right after this. All of us at Kentucky Fried Chicken concentrate on just one thing. The whole In America, Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. In England, simply delicious. We do chicken right. In Japan, prepared by hand. What a beautiful sight. In Mexico, tender and juicy. We do it right. Around the world, Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do it right. We're the world's favorite chicken. Because we do it right. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do it right. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. 
Two o'clock in the afternoon, WGN Radio Chicago. Time for the news brought to you by Delta. Commute to St. Louis, Cincinnati, or Louisville on Delta. Here's Dave Ellsworth. The average homeowner will pay $3.94 a month more for electricity, the result of the Commerce Commission's approval of a $324 million interim rate hike for Commonwealth Edison. That increase becomes effective as soon as ComEd can change its billing procedures. It's just over 7.8% and will be enforced while the Commission decides about the more than 19% hike ComEd originally sought. A man in his late 20s has been arrested after holding a lawyer hostage at gunpoint in a law office at 100 North LaSalle. The